Did you know Spartan teens engaged in a rebellious festival, or babies were tested with wine? Explore how Spartan women defied norms by shaving heads on wedding nights. Join us for a thrilling dive into Sparta's wild traditions. Like, subscribe and vote for the most unbelievable facts. Immediately after birth, Spartan infants were dunked in wine. In the raw moments of birth, Spartan infants were plunged into wine's embrace, a ritual to safeguard against the grip of weakness, the very touch of fragility feared fatal. These nascent lives stood before a council of venerable elders, their pristine bodies subject to intense scrutiny for any trace of imperfection. A verdict unforgiving. Those unable to meet the exacting standards condemned to the desolation of mountainous precipices. Emerging from the wine-immersed baptism, no cradle of comfort awaited. Within the Spartan nurseries, the air reverberated with the anguished cries of babes left to their solitude, a testament to the unyielding forge of resilience. Such formidable practices rippled beyond their borders, attracting the reverent gaze of neighboring societies. The Spartan mothers, Beacons of this uncompromising ethos were in high demand, entrusted as the caretakers of choice for the offspring of those distant lands. The foundations of Spartan society crystallized into three distinct echelons. Firstly, the Spartans, who stood as the city's esteemed citizens. Secondly, the Perioeke, deft artisans residing in close proximity. And lastly, the Helots, relegated to servitude and slavery. Within this framework, it is crucial to focus on the particular realm of Spartan women. Enveloped by the societal composition, Spartan women seamlessly assimilated into their assigned echelon, the realm of citizens, dutifully upholding the hierarchical structure. Embodying their class nomenclature, these women embodied the very essence of Sparta itself, austerity, simplicity and restraint woven into their existence. In stark comparison to the lives of Roman and Athenian women, the women of Sparta enjoyed a remarkably liberated existence within the context of ancient societies. Renowned for their strong-willed independence, Spartan women charted their own course, even if their educational paths diverged from those of men. Unlike the majority of Roman women, they partook in formal education while refraining from military involvement. Nonetheless, the belief persisted that they should possess skills in weapon handling, actively engaging in athletic competitions. Elevating their autonomy, Spartan women held the rare privilege of owning and overseeing their own properties, thereby attaining a legal parity with men. This stands in stark contrast to Roman women, perpetually reliant on male family members for property management. The majority of Spartan women boasted literacy alongside their athletic and martial training a marked departure from prevailing norms in other ancient Greek city-states. Spartan women were allowed to exercise in public naked. Spartan society celebrated physical prowess, an ethos that encompassed both genders. The pursuit of robust health through exercise was deeply ingrained, prompting men and women alike to engage in outdoor activities, au naturel. Contrary to societal norms, the unclothed form was revered for its vitality rather than being objectified. Remarkably, women partook enthusiastically, competing in sports such as foot races and even wrestling bouts. These athletic endeavors were more than just games. They were a testament to the belief that strong women would bear strong offspring. This conviction paved the way for a remarkable level of independence for Spartan women, a rarity in their contemporary world. This approach not only showcased the physical, but also the societal audacity of the Spartan culture. Marriage and sex life of Spartan women. Marriage held immense importance in Sparta. Both men and women were expected to marry, facing shame if they didn't. The driving force behind this was Sparta's unyielding need for a steady influx of young men to bolster its military prowess. As a society that prided itself on military might, Sparta required a continuous stream of trained soldiers, demanding families to bear male heirs. This imperative duty became central to Spartan women. Although marriage typically occurred around age 18 in Sparta, contrasting the earlier unions of girls in other Greek cities, this choice minimized the age gap between spouses, with husbands usually in their 20s to 30s. S. In a departure from many ancient Greek city-states, Spartan women were unburdened by typical domestic responsibilities like cooking and housekeeping. 
as those tasks were managed by serfs called helots. This arrangement granted Spartan women more freedom and autonomy. In the realm of Spartan customs, a striking ritual defined the path of women before wedlock. The solemn act of shaving their heads, an emblem of their commitment. This practice, a stark contrast to the norms of their ancient Greek counterparts, saw Spartan women forsaking flowing tresses in favor of closely cropped hair, a choice that set them apart. Picture the tapestry of ancient Athens, where women held their locks in high esteem, each strand a testament to their allure. Elaborate hairstyles wove tales of femininity and charm, echoes of which resonated through statues that immortalized the goddess Aphrodite herself. Yet, in the heartland of Sparta, a bold departure from this convention unfolded as women donned a hairstyle evocative of the warriors who roamed the battlefield. Amidst this intriguing divergence, the flame of Spartan women's independence burned bright, fueled not only by their unconventional coiffures, but also by the enigmatic separation of married lives. Beneath the gaze of a moonlit sky, couples dwelled apart. Husbands, youthful and full of vigor, congregated in barracks alongside fellow soldiers, forging bonds as unyielding as steel. To catch a stolen glimpse of their beloved wives, these men stealthily tread the path home, threading through shadows, dress of Spartan women. In the ancient cities of Greece, a tapestry of stringent rules tightly enveloped women's garments, binding them to a realm of modesty and concealment. These regulations dictated that women must shroud themselves in non-revealing attire, shielding their essence from the prying eyes of the world and, in doing so, casting a resolute proclamation of their unwavering moral virtue. Yet, in the midst of this sartorial conformity, there stood an anomaly named Sparta, a city of defiance against convention. Within the formidable walls of Sparta, the fabric of convention was rent asunder. There, women held the reins of their own wardrobe, free from the chains of regulation that fettered their counterparts. Their attire dared to defy tradition, daring to bear more than decorum would typically allow. Shorter dresses graced their forms, departing radically from the norm of ancient Greece, exposing more than just their independence. A practical choice, perhaps, as these garments unshackled movement, unbridled action, and allowed them to traverse a world unencumbered. But it was not mere vanity that guided Sparta's stance. No, it was a grander aspiration that coursed through the city's veins. An austere way of existence, a clarion call to asceticism and physical prowess echoed from its walls. Spartan women, guardians of strength and vitality, adopted a lifestyle that mirrored their city's ideals. Health and exercise became their fervent devotion, woven intricately into the very fabric of their identity. Spartan men couldn't live with their wives until they were 30 years old. Because Spartan males were involved in the military from ages 7 to 30, they had an obligation to reside in military barracks until reaching 30 years of age. Although Spartan societal norms suggested that men should marry around this age, while women typically married at 20, numerous individuals opted for marriage several years prior. Consequently, for these less fortunate couples, cohabitation was delayed by several years. Marriage held substantial significance within Spartan culture. This importance was so pronounced that unmarried Spartan men often faced disdain and mockery for not contributing to the Spartan population. Spartan women in the Olympic Games. During the era of ancient Greece, the Olympic Games held an exalted status as a sacred and momentous spectacle. The entire Greek populace eagerly awaited these grand competitions with fervent anticipation. Yet, due to the profound sanctity enveloping the games, an unyielding decree barred women from crossing the threshold into the arenas. This prohibition was so severe that merely beholding the games could invite the gravest penalty, death itself. However, amidst the rigidity of these regulations, a remarkable anomaly took shape in the form of Kiniska, the progeny of King Archidamus II. In a departure from convention, she was granted an unparalleled privilege, the chance to partake in the Olympic Games, albeit as a horse trainer. By participating as a rider, Kiniska ingeniously sidestepped the stipulation of setting foot on the hallowed grounds. Instead, she would be astride a horse, her steed becoming her vessel of participation. The proprietor of an expansive equine domain, Kiniska meticulously bred and honed her horses.
In the annals of 396 BC, her indomitable spirit propelled her to secure a groundbreaking victory, etching her name as the inaugural woman to seize triumph in the Olympic Games. This watershed moment radiated beyond its immediate achievement, igniting a luminous trail for other aspirants. Among those galvanized was the formidable Spartan woman, Eurylianus. In the year 368 BC, she ascended to glory, clinching victory in the two-horse chariot competition. Kaniska's audacious leap across the boundaries of convention had unfurled a new chapter in history, emboldening and empowering women to test their mettle on the hallowed grounds of the Olympics.